everyone, it's Gruhamid here from Loudwire, and to my right, the great and still very beautiful Lita Ford, and she has a bone to pick with Wikipedia. <laughs> Is that right? Well, yeah, yeah. I think they corrected it. I think they might have. Yeah, but they got corrected. Your, they got your name wrong. They got right. my name wrong, and and it got into the press, and it was in books, and it's in all kinds of stuff. And it's not my name. They said my name. I, they said I was born Carmelita Rosanna Ford. I was not born Carmelita. That's not my name. How did they come up with Carmelita? Where did they get that from? I have no idea, but this uh, segues perfectly into a little thing we like to do called Wikipedia Fact or Fiction. Okay. So uh, I'll read something that I saw on your Wikipedia page this very day. You can tell me true or false and maybe elaborate if you'd like. Uh, first of all, let's go with your name. Right now they list it as Lita Rosanna Ford. Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. R-O-S-S-A-N-A. -S -S -A. Sometimes yep. they put two N's and one S. Back to the, the legendary Runaways. Uh, the band broke up due to creative differences when Joan Jett wanted to go uh, into more of like a punk rock Ramones style direction while you and Sandy wanted to play more hard rock tunes and that led to the breakup. Well that's true in a way. It's They worded it in their own wording. Um, you know, I don't think Joan Jett plays Ramones style music. It doesn't sound to me like she does anyway. I, I wouldn't call uh, uh, I Love Rock and Roll Ramones. Um, but uh, it was musical differences. I, on the other hand, did not um, end up playing with Sandy. She went on her own and I went on my own. She went her path, I went on my path, uh, but it was due to musical differences. And the Runaways had been through hell. I mean, for four or five years that we were together, um, four and a half years, uh, it, it was a journey. And we were teenage girls. We were just growing up. We were still developing our hormones, you know, at that age. So. It really led to, um, we, we had to find ourselves as human beings. What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? <laughs> Sounds like Dee Snyder. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to take it video. Yeah, yeah, right. But it's true. And uh, I thought, you know, by the end of the Runaways, I was only 20. And 21? I was 21. And I thought, wow, my life has just begun. On Wikipedia, it also says that you're not a big fan of your initial comeback album, which was released a few years ago. Yeah. And you felt like it was a bit too much of a collaborative effort with uh, your ex-husband, Jim. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was all about Jim. Yeah? It was all about Jim. It, he was the record company. He was the producer. He wrote the songs. He sang on the songs. He sent out um, the tracks to this guy he was working with uh, in California, uh, Greg Hampton. And the two of them put together Wicked Wonderland. And every once in a while, I would come in and throw a vocal line on something and, and a couple of guitar licks. And it was released. And um, it wasn't a Lita Ford album. I couldn't function because I was married to a control freak. He's a control freak. He has to have control over everything. I couldn't function. I would get an email from, say, somebody like Phil Collin from Def Leppard. And he would say to me, let's write a song. And I would say, awesome. Uh, absolutely. And I would get in trouble for talking to Phil Collin. How do you work like that? How do you function like that? I would get in trouble for having too much communication with my band members. Like I wasn't 
able to write with them because it was too much communication with the band. So I I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't write the album. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I so mean, I got really just you do it. This is your album. You do it. You married Jim after knowing him for only two weeks. Yeah. Is what are, what are your thoughts on that decision? Dumb. Presently. Dumb. Fucking dumb. Don't marry somebody after you've known them for two weeks. See, the, the problem with me is um, he caught me at a time where my parents had just passed away. And I lost my dad to brain cancer. And two years, my mother died after my father. She died from breast cancer. And um, I have no brothers or sisters. So I was alone, and um, it, it was really hard. It was really hard. I, I'd lost my entire family, pretty much. And uh, then along came Jim, and he's very pushy, very persistent, and very controlling. And um, he puts on this Mr. Nice Guy uh, facade, persona, and says what you want to hear. He says what you want to hear. So was I in love? No. Did At I get that time when you married him? I was never in love. I found myself pregnant a couple years after into the into the marriage. And at that time I still wanted to leave. <laughs> but I was pregnant and I couldn't take the baby away from his father. I, I wouldn't do that to my son, so I stayed. You were set to star in a reality show on the TLC network called The Gillettes, an extreme American family. Yeah. But your divorce ended plans for that show. Yes. So, if we, if that, say, if that show had gone on. Yes. What do you think it would have been like? What do you think we would have seen? My ex-husband. So. On Wikipedia, it says that you took a business trip to LA to, to meet with TLC about the show, and you return home to find your husband and kids not speaking to you and even turning against you at the encouragement of your ex husband, which uh, Wikipedia writes that that was the moment when you came back and that happened. Yeah. That you said, I need a divorce. Yeah. Is that the right? That's yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It was wacky trying to explain that to the attorneys. But uh, I, um, I had, I had not gone anywhere on my own for a long time, and he had uh, control over everything. He had uh, my cell phone was under his name. He was able to read all my messages, my texts. Um, he was always on my computer looking at to see what I was looking at. As a matter of fact, when I got an email, it would alert his email. So he was able to read everything that was coming through to me. Um, my car was under his name, the house under his name. It, I felt like I had nothing. I had what what was what was private for me? What did I have? So I thought, well, if we're going to do this reality TV show, I would I need to speak to TLC. Because at this point, I had not spoke to TLC. I didn't know what exactly their plans were. And I had spoke to my ex-husband who was the person that was speaking to TLC. But to me, it sounded weird, and it didn't sound like something that I wanted to do. So I wanted to get on a plane, and I wanted to go and speak to them in person. And he didn't want me to go. He, he did not want me to go. Um, and I said, well, I, I have to do this. If we're going to do this TV show, I have to go and talk to TLC. So I got on a plane 
and I went to Los Angeles from Florida, where we lived at the time, and we still had the house in the Caribbean at the same time. And uh, I wrote two songs while I was in LA with a songwriter. The songs were great. They were for the TV reality show. Um, killer songs. And I came back home and presented the songs to Jim and said, hey, check these songs out. They're really great. I, I know you're going to love them. And he liked the songs. But he said to me, we're going back to the islands. I took their passports. I said, you're not going. I, I know you're not coming back because I had taken control over the TLC show. He didn't like that I took control over it. So he pulled the plug and um, turned the kids against me by feeding them a bunch of lies about me, saying that I was uh, going to hurt the kids, I was going to kidnap the kids, saying that I was going to beat the kids, that I was a drug addict, and that I was having sex with other guys, and I could go on. It's all bullshit. It's all not true. And I don't mind saying this because people need to know, because it, it happens to other people. It, it's called parental alienation. It's a, act, there's an actual terminology for what happened. And it needs to be brought to the court systems in the United States because it's mental child abuse is what's happening. And uh, it's part of control. It's part of control. It's yeah. lying. Sure. You know, and uh, so this is why we pulled the plug on TLC. For my last question, I wanted to not take a Wikipedia one and come up with one myself. Okay. So with a legendary career already carved out, a new record that you really love, that really goes to the heart of Lita Ford, all of these things that you've done in your life, where or what is the future of Lita Ford? What do you picture? Hmm. Well, uh, Tina Turner came out of uh, a 16-year abusive relationship, and she won six Grammys with her her album she did. And uh, I don't know. I I would be happy with one Grammy. So. I think that's, you know, if I don't get it with Living Like a Runaway album, maybe the next album that comes out. So I'm not going anywhere. This is who I am. This is what I do. I'm here for the women in rock and roll and the guys in rock and roll I'm here to pave the way. So I'm going to keep going until I get my Grammy. <laughs>